And now a new look at the 2016 presidential campaign from a central player. Donna Brazile was tapped to be the interim chair of the Democratic National Committee the day before the convention in Philadelphia. Last summer, that was last summer. She offers her take in a new book, Hacked, the inside story of the break-ins and breakdowns that put Donald Trump in the White House. She's getting pushback from many in the Clinton campaign for her analysis of what went wrong for Democrats. What I have said to my friends and former colleagues uh, is that something happened uh, in 2016 that we need to get to the bottom of. It's not about Hillary Clinton. It's about our hacking of our democracy. It's about a foreign country, a hostile foreign country, trying to destroy her. And yes, it's about the Democratic Party fighting through this and also fighting to be relevant at a time when the party was being taken over by uh, uh, one campaign. I was the chair of the Democratic Party. My focus was on winning, not just the Oval Office, but every race in between, all the way down to school board races. And the decision by the Clinton campaign to help bail out the DNC gave them control over three important departments. Uh, they made my job impossible as chair. If you're the chair of the party and you cannot spend your own resources to get out the vote, uh, to persuade voters, then it's very tough to do my job. You say the primary process wasn't rigged, but it sounds like you're saying it was a foregone on conclusion what was going on at the DNC. They began to uh, 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 hire vendors, uh, pay for consultants, using money being raised under the name of the Democratic National Committee at a time when our primary process was still underway. But the, pro the, the effect of this book, though, overall, is to hurt Hillary Clinton. I mean, she comes out of this looking very bad. Her campaign comes out looking very bad. Was that your intention? My intention was to write about the DNC, and I think that book really illustrates how Hillary Clinton faced a huge, uh, uh, what I call, headwind in 2016. Not only was her party under attack, uh, but her campaign was under constant attack. I became the chair of the party because of a hacking right. uh, that took place, and I volunteered my time to elect Hillary Clinton. I spent every day uh, working to elect Hillary Clinton and eliminating the debt. But do you worry about having burned all these bridges with all these people you've worked with for years? Oh, Judy, look, let me just say this. As, as a woman who's been active in the Democratic Party since the age of nine, I've been involved in 11 presidential campaigns, seven as uh, a campaign staffer, 21 seasons in the Democratic Party. We had a very competitive primary in 2016. I believe it's important to learn the lessons uh, of the 2016 race so that we will not make those uh, mistakes again. I, I believe that Hillary Clinton ran the, the, the strongest possible campaign, given the odds that were against her. Not only the Russians and the hacking and the interference and the meddling, uh, but we had a media that was obsessed on covering Donald Trump. Of course, one of the episodes in the middle of this campaign was uh, when you were accused, and you later acknowledged it had happened, of giving, uh, you were a commentator for CNN, Yes. Uh, and you were accused of giving uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign one of the questions that was going to come up in a primary debate. You said later this was something you would always regret. No question, Judy. Look, I regret that. But what my job was was to expand the number of debates and forums, and, and, and CNN benefited from that because I was also a CNN commentator along with being the vice chair at the DNC. But at the same time, I wanted to give the candidates heads up that in expanding the number of debates and forums, we would include some difficult questions that minority, uh, the minority community wanted, wanted to answer, and I wanted to give both campaigns a heads up. But in retrospect, you're saying that was a mistake. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's been blown yeah. out of proportion. CNN has never shared anything with me regarding uh, debate topics. I was struck that you wrote early in the book that you thought of yourself, and I'm quoting here, as an actress uh, in some <laughs> ways, playing the part the producers wanted you to play. You said either the part of the, I'm not going to say it here, B-word, who stands up to the GOP talking points, or they might ask me to be cool, calm Donna, the voice of reason. I think some people would listen to that, read that, and say, that's troubling. In 2008, people were upset with me because they said, I'm black, I wouldn't support uh, Barack Obama, I'm, I'm a female, I'm not supporting Hillary Clinton. And I kept saying, why should I have to support either one? I can support both of them. Look, my job as a, a commentator is to give my point of view. Just two other quick things. Once you mentioned President Obama. Yes. Uh, you are, again, you're critical of what he did to the Democratic Party. Uh, you say that he and others have basically stripped the party bare. You said he didn't pay enough attention. He didn't raise money for the party. 
Was he good or bad for the country, and was he good for the African-American community? He was fantastic for the country. That's another reason why I stepped up uh, to become chair of the Democratic Party. But, Judy, when you lose 900, and, uh, 900 legislative seats, I'm not blaming him for all 932 legislative seats, all 60-some-odd House and Senate seats, 11 gubernatorial races, but this happened under his watch. It is the responsibility of the president, when he's a Democrat, to help the Democratic Party. And president Obama, Michelle Obama, we all missed him in the White House, but we have to rebuild the Democratic Party, and that's what I hope to do as well. Last question is about President Clinton in the wake of the Harvey Weinstein, the, the, the Roy Moore, and the yes. other accusations, Al Franken, that are out there. Questions are being raised now anew about President Clinton and yes. what he was accused of doing with, in the whole Monica Lewinsky episode. Do you think, in retrospect, that he should have stepped down from office after that, as some are saying he should have? We should focus on what is happening now, which is that we have a lot of women who are coming forward with their, with their stories. We should believe them. We should encourage them. Uh, but I think, you know, to, to try to go back and relitigate the, the 1990s, I haven't had a, a much time to do that. Do you think the women who were accusing Bill Clinton should have been believed? It was toxic. Uh, at the time when people thought that these women were politically motivated, and that's one of the reasons why I think we're having this conversation again. But we should not take our eyes off of what's happening in Alabama, a race that is on, that is scheduled for uh, December 12th, a candidate who's been uh, uh, accused of being a pedophile, who was banned from the mall because of his activities. Uh, so I think we should focus on what we're discussing today and let historians write about whether or not uh, what happened in the 1990s should be relitigated. Look, we can also go back and relitigate Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill. There's right. so many episodes that we can go back and relitigate. But right now, this is before us, and we should encourage these women who are speaking up and tell them we believe them so that they can tell their truth. Donna Brazil, the book, as you say, is Hacks. Thank you very much. Thank you.